Welcome to Lecture Online. Now we're going to do an example where the equation is not an exact equation and we will need an integrating factor to find the solution. Now let me show you why this equation is not an exact equation. Again, this is in the format where we can say that this is the partial of u with respect to x times dx plus the partial of u with respect to y times dy is equal to zero where the left side equation therefore is equal to du. So this is really du is equal to zero. And so what we can then say is this then in the format of m times dx plus n times dy is equal to zero, where m is equal to the quantity between parentheses right here, and n is this quantity in the parentheses right there. Now we know that, that it is an exact equation if, so we could say it is exact, exact if the partial of m with respect to y is equal to the partial of n with respect to x. And that makes sense since m is the partial of u with respect to x. If we then again take the partial with respect to y, and we do then on the right side here, the, since n is equal to the partial of u with respect to y, and then we also take it with respect to x, then of course they must be equal to each other because then it, it's the exact same quantity. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's take the partial with respect to y of this quantity right here. So the partial of m with respect to y is equal to the partial with respect to y of the quantity xy squared plus 4x squared times y. Remember, when we do that, x is going to be a constant. So x is just like a constant here. So this is equal to 2xy uh, plus, and here this would be 4x squared because yeah, the two goes in front, so 2xy to the first power, and this y would then go away, we end up with 4x squared. All right, let's do that now with the n, so the partial of n with respect to x is equal to the partial with respect to x of the quantity, that would be right here, that would be 3x squared y plus 4x cubed, and remember now in this case, y is a constant, x is the variable, so this here would be 6, xy plus 12x squared. So you can see that those are not equal to each other, so therefore we can say not equal. Therefore we can say that they're not exact. So what we can do is we can actually multiply the left side and the right side of this original differential equation by an integrating factor and when we do so then it will become exact. Now we won't show yet how we got the integrating factor which we'll show you in the next video, but let's say that we have an integrating factor where we say that f, which is the integrating factor, is equal to y over x. So we call this the integrating factor. And then in the next video we'll show you how to obtain such an integrating factor. Now what we can do is we can multiply both sides of the equation by an f, so we're going to do that. So we take this equation right here, this equation right here, we can say that therefore f times m dx plus f times n dx is equal to zero. And now if we pick the right integrating factor, that will now be an exact equation. Oh, yes, yes, thank you. Uh, dy equals zero. And if we pick the correct integrating factor, then this will be an exact equation and we can find the solution to the differential equation. So let's go ahead and see if we pick the right integrating factor. So here what we're going to do is we're going to multiply that times y over x. So we have y over x multiplied times, and let me put a bracket on there like that. So we're going to multiply the whole left side by this quantity. So we have x y squared plus 4x squared y that's times dx plus 3x squared y, so 3x squared y plus 4x cubed times dy is equal to zero, and of course the, the right side multiplied by the, by the integrating factor will still be a zero, so when we apply that we get the following, so we get the um, that would be y cubed, because well, y times y squared is y cubed, x is cancelled out, plus uh, we have 4x to the first power y squared quantity times dx plus here we get um, 
3x times y squared plus, and we get uh, 4x squared y quantity times dy is equal to zero. So now I have a new m and new n, and now let's see if this is indeed an exact equation. So we have m times dx plus n times dy is equal to zero. Now notice m and n are new. Sometimes we use p and q so we don't confuse the two. And so now we're going to see that the partial of m with respect to y is that going to be equal question mark to the partial of n with respect to x. So let's go ahead and do that. So the partial of m with respect to y is equal to, that would be the partial with respect to y of this quantity right here, which is y cubed plus 4xy squared. Remember, when we take the partial with respect to y, that x is simply a constant. So this would be equal to 3y squared plus, that would be 8x uh, times y, right? The 2 comes down. And that would give you 8x, x is a constant, times y to the first power. Let's do the same for the partial of n with respect to x, which is equal to the partial with respect to x of the quantity. And that would be this new n right here, which is 3xy squared plus 4x squared y. And so that would be equal to, remember that when we take the partial with respect to x out, y is a constant, so this would be 3y squared plus, and y is a constant, so that would be uh, 8xy. So it would be 8xy, and notice the two are equal, so therefore we can say that the equation now is an exact equation, and then we can solve it using the, the methodology of solving for the first order uh, differential equation that is exact. So again, what we realized here is that we had a differential equation that was not exact because this condition was not true. Notice they were not equal, and they're not equal, therefore not exact. We found an integrating factor. Well, I didn't show yet how to do that. That will be the next video. We multiplied both sides of the equation, the left side and the right side, by the integrating factor. In this case, it was y over x. And when we did so, we ended up with the differential equation that was exact, and then, of course, we can solve it using the, the principles that we learned in the previous series. And I'll show you then, of course, how to, um, how to do that. So, now you're probably wondering, how do you find that integrating factor? That's really the key, isn't it? If you find the integrating factor, when you have an equation that's not exact, you can then make it exact and solve the equation. So, it's a pretty handy technique to know, and I'll show in the next video how to find the integrating factor for a problem like this.